Okay, I'm just doing a quick screencast on CNC lathe. Um, this is actually going to be a four axis because of the notches. But if you didn't have a four axis lathe, you'd have to move this to the mill and do milling like from that point of view there. Like those three holes and these three notches. So the plan is going to be to machine this side as far as we can go. Then we flip it over and machine this side remaining and the bore and all that. Now if you're in 4-axis lathe then you can actually get it to start milling that stuff. So uh, let me put it back to the original orientation here. There we go. Alright. The other thing I'm going to put in is a three jaw chuck. Right, right there. Three jaw chuck. And material. There's some material there. Alright. Good enough for simulation. I probably would hold it by more than that. But so we could probably play around with it. But we can't machine in this area. We've decided we're only going to machine this far. Alright, so this one is actually something I got out of cam sample. So our, this has already been done. So let's simulate this one. Alright, so there's our stock. Our orientation on uh, CNC lay would be tools that are upside down and coming from this position. Alright, let's hit play. Machines the front, machines the outside. You see those uh, multiple cuts there. I'm going to have to switch tools. Yeah, switch tools again as a finishing tool. And grooving, a little bit of grooving. And then looks like spot drill and drill. Let me move this out of the way. And threading, which probably just blew right by it. There's a threading tool right there, a little teeny little 60 degree tool doing that thread. Alright, so this is done. Now, normally, like when we set up the operation here, we close this out. Uh, you're putting in like a relative size cylinder or a fixed sized. To represent the stock. Oops, go here. And the setup will be Z this way and X that way. So, and in this case, they look like using the front of the model. And they got a safe zone stock front. And they got turning on turning. And the stock is a fixed size and, and turn this stuff on. And let me go through the other operations. So facing is all right. Using a kind of tool is this now. Not sure. I got too many intermingled tools there. Uh, model front. Yeah, retract clearance moves. Step over in computer. Okay. We have the profiling. This is like the roughing one. You can see all the cuts there. Uh, 
Actually, I did not program this. I, I got this from the cam samples. Actually, I learned a lot by looking at the cam samples. I think this actually has the older uh, profile up here. All right. So this was set up to be a dual chuck. Like you put a chuck on this side and hold on to that. All right. So we're holding on to this. This is sort of what you have to imagine. This is all finished except for those slots. So we're going to hold on to this area here, and not in the radius. The radius is not a clamping area. That would be adequate. Or in a collet, that would work. And you got to have some way to uh, know exactly where this is, because you have to make everything on this side line up with this side. All right, so I switched operation two. I actually saved what they call a stock model and I had to import it as an STL file. But we just turn off the chuck and the body. All right, so there's our material, even with the drilled hole. I was able to save it. And this is actually a better demonstration of operation number two. So we'll put the chuck back on and operation is, is our material okay I'll resume this out a little bit I'm sorry I got the wrong one on there operation two there we go so in this case let me just flip this around this way this is sort of like if we had to do it in our lathe we would have to flip it over and, and set it, do a new setup, right? So it'd be Z this way, X that way again. Only we need to have some control of how, where do we place this. So we actually use a, a soft jaw that was cut. I think actually we could, we could capture it by the outside of this, this ring right here. That would be the best. Only problem is we can't mill the little slots. So maybe we would, it would have to, make a soft jaw with a counterbore so it's stopped right here so you can place them in and they still hold it this is this is like a universal jaw so but good enough for demonstration let me let me put let's see x is up that'd be front okay see how the simulation will work simulate all right here we go and hit play right same thing again, you're going to machine the front, and it's not working this time. Remember, this is finished now. Here, the rough tool, you got the finish tool, big drill. This is a boring tool. And now, let me stop. This would be, imagine, imagine in real simulation, this would, this would be rotating. But at this point, it would be stopped. This now becomes a axis this will become this c axis c rotates around z and this will be the spinning tool so it's this is really just like uh imagine you're in a milling machine now in our shop this is how we would have to do it we'd have to set it up a third time this way so it's just a round part uh orientation would not matter And we would mill it in this direction. And that's all really a, a four axis lathe is doing. It's just doing the same thing a mill could do, 
Well, we just it oriented it different. All right. So this actually was set up to do engraving on the side. So let me go back to the. Now this is the orientation, what they call a sub spindle. So you'd have a, a chuck on the left and a chuck on the right. So this is a kind of kind of high level. So it's like uh, you could do everything without touching anything. You wouldn't have. Wouldn't you have to flip it over? Uh, if you had a four axis, actually, it becomes more than four axis because this also becomes a axis. So it's like, I think it's like six axis. So, all right, let me turn. Uh, let's see, operation two. Okay, I gotta replay this one again. Okay, zoom up a little bit. All right. There's a boring bar in there. We had the pre-drill. Now it's now it's milling. You know, it's got an end mill milling the slots. Drill. Make sure you get enough clearance there. You don't want this to hit that. This looks like a tap, 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 tap. And now it becomes a... Uh, in the VF2, we could set this up as a fourth axis pot and do fourth axis engraving. So actually what happens is, is this would be rotating back and forth. But in CAD simulation, that's what it's really doing. All right, so that's a little engraving tool there. And if you look here, it's it, it did this engraving. So when you're getting it to this multi-axis world, this is not really any more difficult. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of stuff going on. You got you got the left hand chuck, and then uh, if you add left hand chuck with milling. All right, so now you got milling and turning. Then if you have the sub spindle, this side, mm -hmm. what happens is, is this slides over and grabs that. So this, that'll be controlled as far as where it is. And then you machine this side, you know, do lathe work on this side, turn it into a mill, and then turn it into a uh, simultaneous axis that's uh, this is this is the spinning tool, and to engrave this it would have to go. Uh, let's see. In a in a mill, this would be the z direction. This is x in the um, lathe, and z would be this way, and this would be. Oh, I don't know if they call it C2 or the sub spindle would be rotating like this, like that. So every time it comes up, it'll be coming up in X, not Z. So just different orientations. So I thought I'd give you a quick little, I thought this is pretty good little simulation of how to do that. And, uh, but if you're learning all your basics, you're just applying all your basics to this situation. But if you just even see this operation too, how are you going to hold it? It's the same problem you have on milling. You, you got to be able to hold the part after the first operation. Okay, uh, so I'm going to end this one and go to bed.